Marilyn Monroe, without a doubt, is one of Hollywood's biggest icons. In the 1950s, she dazzled on the silver screen and captivated the world with her distinctive platinum blonde hair, red lips, beauty mark on her cheek, curvaceous figure, and alluring voice. But behind the glitz and glamour, Marilyn's life was a roller coaster ride through stormy seas. She was one of the most famous and glamorous stars of Hollywood, but she also had a secret life that was full of pain and struggle. In 1962, at the tender age of 36, Marilyn's life came to a sorrowful end due to a fatal overdose of barbiturates. While her passing was officially deemed a probable s whispers of darker possibilities, including murder and conspiracy, continue to swirl. But who was the real Marilyn Marilyn? How did she become the icon that we know today? What story of her affair with JFK and his brother? We'll find out in this video while you can glaze over some of the rare photos of her. Born as Norma Jean Mortensen in 1926, she never knew her father. The absence of her father must have cast a shadow over her early years. Her mother, Gladys, suffered from mental illness and was unable to take care of her. As a result, she was placed in foster homes and orphanages where she faced abuse and neglect. This turbulent upbringing undoubtedly shaped her resilience and determination. At the age of just 16, she married her first husband, James Doherty, only to avoid being sent back to the orphanage. However, four years later, she made the courageous decision to divorce him, ultimately setting the stage for her pursuit of a modeling and acting career. After changing her name to Marilyn Monroe and dyeing her hair blonde, she inked a deal with 20th Century Fox. This venture led her to memorable roles in films like The Asphalt Jungle, All About Eve, and Monkey Business. While she skyrocketed to become a symbol and a media sensation, there was a burning desire within her to establish herself as a serious actor. To hone her craft, she studied with Lee Strasberg at the actor's studio and even formed her own production company. This dedication paid off, propelling her to star in critically acclaimed films such as Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, The Seven Year Itch, Bus Stop, Some Like It Hot, and The Misfits. Before her massive fame and wealth, a then financially struggling Marilyn was not ashamed of posing nude for money. Before she became famous, she was struggling financially and often posed without clothes during her photography sessions to earn more money. In 1953, Playboy magazine released its first issue containing rare full-color images of a completely bare-skinned Marilyn. The founder of Playboy, Hugh Hefner, obtained the photos and published them without Marilyn's consent or compensation. 20th Century Fox, the studio that hired Marilyn, wanted her to deny that it was her body in the photos, fearing that it would damage her reputation. However, Marilyn owned up to the situation without shame and even admitted that she had bought a copy of the issue for herself. This scandal not only failed to harm Marilyn's acting career, but it helped to launch her image as a mega symbol. Of course they were wrong. The fans, my public, cheered when I admitted it was me and that calendar and that Playboy first issue publicity helped my career, Marilyn said. In matters of the heart, Marilyn's journey was marked by two more marriages. She married baseball legend Joe DiMaggio and playwright Arthur Miller, but both marriages ended in divorce. When compared to her first marriage, Marilyn's second marriage was a big deal in the news. She tied the knot with Joe DiMaggio, a famous baseball player, in 1954. They had a strong physical attraction and seemed really into each other, but there was a problem. They had different lifestyles and careers, and it caused a lot of issues. According to reports, DiMaggio got really jealous and possessive of Marilyn. He didn't like how open and free she was about her feelings and her body, especially in her movies. Tension had marked their marriage since it began in 1954 as Marilyn traveled for work while DiMaggio wanted a demure domestic housewife. DiMaggio had insisted Marilyn must remain fully clothed at all times and break out of her dumb blonde typecasting. DiMaggio wanted a more old-fashioned wife who followed his lead, but Marilyn wanted someone who supported her career and her independence. Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio's marriage took a sharp turn for the worse, marked by claims of mistreatment, infidelity, and intense jealousy. Their marriage only lasted for nine months. Marilyn said it was because DiMaggio was mentally unkind to her. It broke his heart, and he never got married again. He was still so very much in love with her that he helped her to get out of mental asylum. To know more about this incident, keep watching the video until the end. 
Alongside these marriages, she also engaged in various famous affairs, including with President John F. Kennedy and his brother Robert F. Kennedy. Marilyn's relationships with the Kennedys were the talk of the town. Whispers of a scandalous affair between the sultry starlet and both President John F. Kennedy and his brother Robert F. Kennedy swirled like wildfire. It all came to a head when Marilyn allegedly threatened a press conference, ready to spill the beans on their tangled love affairs. The iconic moment that added fuel to the fire was Marilyn's legendary happy birthday performance for him at his 45th birthday celebration at Madison Square Garden on May 19, 1962, just months before her death. In Donald Spoto book Marilyn Marilyn, the biography Marilyn's masseur and friend Ralph Roberts claims she recalled her affair to JFK by saying, it was okay to sleep with a charismatic president, and Marilyn loved the secrecy and the drama of it, but Kennedy was not the kind of man she wanted to spend her life with, and she made that very clear. However, there is only one rare photo taken after the performance during a party at the home of movie executive Arthur Krim that is reportedly the only known image of either Kennedy with Marilyn. Marilyn's affair with JFK soon fizzled out, and he passed her off to his brother Bobby, who was the attorney general at the time. She became obsessed with Bobby and hoped that he would leave his wife for her. She wrote in a letter to one of Miller's children, I had dinner last night with the Attorney General of the United States, Robert Kennedy. He is very intelligent, and besides all that, he's got a terrific sense of humor. I think you would like him. Anyway, I had to go to this dinner last night as he was the guest of honor, and when they asked him who he wanted to meet, he wanted to meet me. And he isn't a bad dancer either. However, Bobby wanted to end the relationship as he feared that it would ruin his political career and his family. As she felt used and abandoned by both brothers, heartbroken Marilyn was reportedly threatening to hold a press conference divulging her relationships with the Kennedys. She also claimed to have a diary that contained sensitive information about their affairs and their involvement in national security issues. However, right after their split, a tragedy struck which led to many conspiracies. Marilyn Monroe died. She was found dead in her Los Angeles home on August 5, 1962. She had overdosed on barbiturates, which were prescribed by her psychiatrist. Her death was ruled as a probable <laughs> but many people suspected foul play. Marilyn's death was a shocking and tragic event that stunned the world. The iconic actress, who had captivated millions with her beauty, talent, and charisma, was found dead in her Los Angeles home on August 5, 1962. She was only 36 years old. The official cause of death was a probable <laughs> by an overdose of barbiturates, but many questions and conspiracy theories have persisted ever since. But how did the public react to Marilyn's death? How did they cope with the loss of their idol and icon? How did they express their grief, disbelief, and curiosity? Well, the public reaction to her death was one of mixed emotions and responses. Many people, including conspiracy theorists, to this day refuse to accept that she had killed herself and speculated that she had been murdered by someone who wanted to silence her or exploit her. Some of the suspects included the Mafia, the Soviet Union, the FBI, and even President John F. Kennedy and his brother Robert F. Kennedy, with whom she had allegedly had affairs. Her fans and admirers mourned her loss and paid tribute to her legacy. Thousands of people gathered outside her home and at the coroner's office to catch a glimpse of her body. Her funeral, which was arranged by her ex-husband, Joe DiMaggio, was attended by only a few close friends and family members. However, hundreds of fans and reporters crowded outside the cemetery to witness the ceremony. Some of them even tried to break through the gates or climb over the walls to get closer to her grave. Trapped in a harsh industry that often exploited her, Marilyn battled mental health struggles for most of her life. While her struggles with substance abuse are well documented, numerous sources, including PBS, suggest she may have also grappled with bipolar disorder. Sadly, she lived in an era with limited understanding and resources for those facing mood disorders, and as her career neared its end, Marilyn's emotional well-being plummeted, particularly after her third divorce. Reports reveal that in 1961, her instability led to an involuntary admission to a psychiatric ward after a distressing episode where she faced physical mistreatment and threats of being restrained. Marilyn was so desperate to leave that she reached out to her ex-husband, Joe DiMaggio, and begged for his help. Eventually, he intervened and helped in her release. 
1962, Marilyn's final appearance on screen was in the comedy Something's Got to Give alongside Dean Martin. Her battle with substance abuse had reached a dangerous point, causing her to frequently miss filming, often presenting doctor's notes for various supposed illnesses. When she did manage to be on set, reports from Independent indicate she struggled to remember her lines and her drastic weight loss and camera shyness were concerning. There was even an alarming incident where she was found in a barbiturate-induced coma. Initially, the media portrayed her behavior as disruptive, but later footage emerged showcasing her sincere apologies for missed cues and respectful interactions with her co-stars. Despite this, she was let go from the film due to excessive absences. It was only after Dean Martin insisted on her return that she was rehired. Tragically, Marilyn's passing put an end to the project, leaving it forever unfinished. Marilyn's life was a paradox of fame and tragedy, of glamour and pain, of love and loneliness. She was a woman who inspired millions with her beauty, talent and charisma, but also a woman who suffered from insecurity, abuse and addiction. She was a woman who had everything, but also a woman who had nothing. She was a woman who left a legacy that still fascinates the world today.